Decoupage is a creative activity involving paper which is colored, cut, assembled, and glued to a surface according to one's own design. But it is so much more. The National Guild of Decoupures would like to introduce you to the art of decoupage. There was an artist inside of me fighting to get out. It's so versatile. There are so many ways you can go with it and so many ways you can use it in your home and as gifts. And you create heirlooms with this beautiful art. And it is an art. It doesn't matter whether you want to do a, a country piece of decoupage, which is maybe wildflowers or something that represents the country where I live, or it could, could be something extremely sophisticated, like a black chinoiserie piece, or you can do anything. There isn't anything you can't do. That's one of the fun parts about decoupage, is you can do it in both contemporary form or the classical in whichever is uh, the individual likes. But the artist needs the freedom to have the creativity. Where the art of decoupage differs from the craft is in its exquisite attention to detail and design. Some projects are finished in a short time, but other projects may take years. Traditional decoupage probably began in Venice during the Renaissance in the early 1700s as an inexpensive way to reproduce the fine, hand-painted furniture that was being imported from the Orient. Guilds were formed to meet the demand of what came to be called arte povera, or the poor man's art. Soon the art of cutting out designs from paper prints, coloring and applying them to surfaces, spread all over Europe. In France, it was called découpage, from couper, to cut, and that is the name by which we know it today. Marie Antoinette and her court were ardent decoupures. Later, in England, Queen Victoria became not only a collector of the art form, but a decoupure herself. During her era, decoupage was often taken to extremes, and anything with a surface was in danger of being decorated. Over the years, the art form rose and fell in popularity. With the disbanding of the craft guilds, in most places, decoupage became a lost art. In the United States, Hiram Manning and his mother Maybell are often credited with reintroducing the original Renaissance form of decoupage sometime after the Second World War. Interest in decoupage spread rapidly. And in 1971, a small group of people met in Dallas, Texas to try to preserve the traditional form of the art. Thus, the National Guild of Decoupures was formed. That small group of 17 has since grown into an international organization with chapters throughout the US, Canada, Great Britain, South Africa, and Japan. The primary purpose of the Guild is to promote the art of decoupage in its finest form and to educate its members and the general public in all its many variations. These include decoupage under varnish, under glass, on a mirror, on fabric, repoussé or bas relief, gold leaf, and mother of pearl, elevations, and vue d'optique. I just love the way that prints look under glass. That's my favorite thing to do. And that's my lamp back there. My favorite piece is my mother of pearl jar. That was a real challenge, and I really enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> Right to say I love because I was a sculptor first, okay? And I love the idea of sculpting. What I like the most in decoupage is under varnish and decoupage on fabric. I like to do that too. I think you can do so much with it. It is so creative. Uh, the things you can do around the house, I think, are 
That's really what inspired me, the urns, the uh, clocks, the furniture, and things for all the children. Well, you can do lamps, you can do boxes, you can do floor mats, you can do uh, furniture, furniture, <laughs> milk cans, <laughs> you, you know, and uh, all sorts of things, and toilet seat covers. <laughs> The materials you will need are very few. Printed paper, which you create or acquire. Coloring pencils or paints. Good cuticle scissors. White glue. Acrylic spray. Varnish and brushes. And sometimes sandpaper, depending on your project. Some of the sources for printed paper include reproduced prints made especially for decoupage, wrapping paper, botanical prints, postcards, note cards, calendars, coloring books, and other books. Glossy magazine pictures and thick embossed papers such as wallpaper should be avoided. With today's technology, prints can easily be created and reproduced, as well as enlarged, reduced, or even reversed. Whenever possible, it's best to use paper with at least 50% rag content. The process involved in producing a piece of decoupage can be simple and straightforward, or wildly creative. Decoupage is gratifying. Um, it's something that you become so engrossed in because you have to color. Oh, then you have to learn how to cut. And then you have to glue it down. Well, then the next thing you want to do, you want to put a background. So, oh, what should I do? Oh, I will do it in gold leaf. Oh, I don't like that gold leaf. So then you get involved with finishes that go on gold leaf and then you get into tarnishes. One thing leads to another. Painting, varnishing, I usually make the things that I decoupage, but I've always dabbled in some sort of art. I make stained glass, I make terrariums, I carve. So this is just an extension, uh, an exciting opportunity to use other skills. My favorite uh, thing in decoupage is, is coloring. I just love the color and see what comes out of a black and white print when you add color to it. It's just fun to do, a lot of fun. Decoupage can be done almost anywhere. With all these choices, where do you start? You can visit your local library, take courses, go to exhibits, but the National Guild of Decapores is one of the best resources for information, education, inspiration, and support. Once a year, members of the National Guild of Decapores meet for a convention. They gather from all over to show off their latest works. Old friends are greeted, business is conducted, pieces may be submitted for judging, and then the learning begins through workshops, lectures, demonstrations, and exhibits. Methods are discussed and sources are shared. Everyone is made welcome. I think, first of all, if you've always wanted to do something that there is a bit of a challenge to and someone to help you get there, this is the organization to be in. I very much appreciate the way people are very willing to share their hard-earned skills. They've found all the pitfalls and they enable you to bypass those pitfalls by sharing their knowledge uh, and skill. And that's, uh, I appreciate that very much. 
everybody here just knows everything. They've been doing doing decoupage for years and years, and it's great to come. It's a great clearinghouse for information, and everybody's real supportive, and they're willing to teach you. I've learned so much. I, I'm self-taught in the beginning. I just started figuring it out, and then once I got a hold of the guild, it was, it was gotten a lot better. <laughs> It's just been wonderful, the friendships I've made and uh, the joy I've had in coming to the conventions. <laughs> Every convention is the best, and I love it. A newsletter is published four times a year, offering an abundance of resources, including how-to instructions, videos, and slides, lists of teachers and suppliers, and a whole lot more. Local chapters get together during the year for their own programs, demonstrations, workshops, projects, and exhibits. We invite you to join us. Wonderful, wonderful friendships. You learn so much. That's what I like about it. It's just a thrill to come to the conventions, enjoy the different locations in the cities, and uh, share with them uh, our common love. I have been in the, involved in the National Guild of Day Capillaries for 25 years and have thoroughly enjoyed it. This is my first uh, convention, and uh, I, I, I can't tell you how wonderful it is. I love being a member of the National Guild of Day Capers. I love the association with other people, the idea of exchanging. And um, I guess that's what I really love most about the Guild, and I'm going this next year. They don't know it yet, but I'm going this next year. If you would like more information on the art of decoupage, please contact us. If you have any questions, we'll find the answers. It's very easy to join with us because we are open to the public. You don't have to have any credentials. You don't have to have any qualifications. You don't have to have experience. And all you have to do is say, I'm interested in learning how to do decoupage. And then we warm, warmly welcome you, love to have you with us, and we love to teach. If you ask me some questions, I can give you some answers. <laughs>